Look here. Basically, what we just did on conformational isomers was easy to tell because this obvious difference between this, which is what? Pentane. And then this, which has the same number. See, I'm just moving them around. Same number of carbons and hydrogens, but it's a different name. It's a different structure. What structure? What is it? Two methyl butane. Two methyl butane. Okay. Now, a little bit harder to tell apart are, well, actually, a lot harder, these. There's wow. this one. Those are some big balls. <laughs> Thank you. And, wait, I've got to get my other one out of here. There we go. You told me I'm born this one. Wait, that looks the same. What the heck? Mm hmm. Let's see it again. Show me them. It's the same. Show me them? It's <laughs> called chromium, not show me them. <laughs> It's not crooked. No wonder I didn't pass. All right. Watch again. This one. Oh. A versus. I know you're actually digging into the floor, right? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> they are the same exact thing. Not exactly. But they're very similar. Let me show you. Look at his shadow. You ready? Shadow. See the shadow? Yeah. Wow. Now. <gasps> oh. oh, that's impressive. Believe it or not, those are called conformational isomers. They differ only by their rotation about a carbon carbon single bond. Uh oh. So I can actually rotate one guy into the other. I can't do that with structural isomers, I can't rotate one guy. I can't rotate 2-methylbutane into pentane. <clears throat> They're totally different compounds. They have different properties and everything. They're not the same. These guys, as you can tell, what's the name of this compound? If I look at it this way, you can see it pretty obvious. What's his name? Ethane, yeah. And he's still ethane, if I look at him that way, but he's got two possible extreme different conformations. Two extremes. It could be it. And by the way, these guys are always rotating in and out of these conformations. What's that? If they're always rotating, why does it matter? Well, believe it or not, it matters in that there's a um, one of them was going to be more stable than the other. So depending on the conformation it's in, might make a reaction happen at a particular spot more likely than on another spot. We're not going to get to that. You have to kind of just trust me on this for a little while. It does matter later on. Because uh, it will spend more time in one conformation than in the other. And we're going to talk a little bit about the stability. But the actual reactions we won't get to for another two months. Or, well, a month and a half at least. All right, so let's do some examples of how you draw. I'm gonna, don't try drawing this. I'm going to show you how to draw them. But here, this is just to give you an idea of how much room to leave on your paper here. All right? Um, there were, under where it says Newman projections, okay, you already have that, right, don't you? Okay? All right, look here. Don't try drawing these. I'll show you how, and I'll show you what they mean. But leave yourself about that much room, because that's how we're going to draw them. Kind of like their shadows looked on my board a second ago, right? All right? So that's how I'm going to draw them, and we will do that in a second. All right? So if I'm drawing ethane, that's my example, C2H6, I want to pretend that one of those two carbons, I'm looking directly down, uh, down them, okay? And I want to pretend that the first carbon... I'll make him a dot, and the second carbon I'll make a circle. And I remember how I just had I have one here and one there under Newman projections, okay? So let's make one guy a dot and one guy a circle. Okay, there's my dot and there's my circle. And I'm going to make a dot and a circle over on this side too. Yes, yeah, draw them now. Now coming, if I look at them this way, I'll do the... Um, I'll do the staggered first, so let me just get him in the staggered confirmation here. So I look at this guy, and I'll try to turn him to make the shadow right. Can you all see the shadow there? Mm -hmm. all right. I Basically, I have one guy coming down here, one there, and one there. That's an H, that's an H, and that's an H. Now, the temptation here is, and the mistake would be, to make everybody coming off of that same carbon. That if I could take these apart, that is the dot. That's one of them. Now, the other guy behind him 
is staggered against that one. So he's like this. And I have to draw these guys coming off of the circle, not off of the dot, with an H, an H, and an H. Okay? So that make a little bit more sense when you're drawing them? All right. Now, to draw the, the eclipse is a little more difficult. By the way, this guy's called staggered. That's the staggered combination. And these words make sense. You could see that that's staggered, whereas these are eclipsed, and, and that makes sense too. When they're eclipsed, and I draw them, I look at the shadow here, it'd be very difficult to draw if I did it perfectly. So I kind of have to tilt it a little bit. Got to tilt it just a little bit. And depending on you know, what you look up, uh, pictures in the book or pictures online, it may be tilted slightly differently, but I'm going to draw it like this. I'll draw my first three like that. Let me do that first, then just watch. The next ones I'll just make to the side, okay? So as if I took that thing and just, I took that and I just tilted a little bit to the side so I can still see the H's behind it. You see? Almost like it's uh, the line of this guy is just tilted a little bit. And this guy's called eclipsed. Now we already know that electrons are negatively charged and they're you know orbiting all these hydrogen atoms and from the Vesper theory we also know that electrons repel each other all right when we we're trying to make those structures back in the last chapter so which of these guys you think is going to be more stable more happy to be where he is yeah the stagger because they're further apart they're going to repel each other although they can go in and out of these conformations all the time and they are rotating all the time they're going to spend more time in this staggered conformation which is more stable than this eclipse confirmation, which is less stable, simply because the hydrogen of the hydrogen repulsion. Okay, so due to the hydrogen repulsion. Okay? Those H's are repelling each other, and so they're going to spend more time in the staggered conformation than in the eclipse. Now, it would be nice if this were the only, this only organic compound you ever had to do. But unfortunately, even a compound like this, I can draw the conformations to. Okay? Y'all have that copy? I want to just erase the board here for a second. Look at it. I can tilt this guy down any bond. I might hold him like that with my shadow. And you can see he is 1, 2, 3, 4, so that's butane, and he's a 2-methyl. But I can actually rotate him so that I go look down this bond. And I could draw the staggered and eclipse, believe it or not, looking down that bond. All right? Guy's facing up. Here, this is a dot. That's a circle. And that's what I'm going to teach you how to do with the harder one right now. Okay, so try this guy. Oh, sorry, I don't, don't, don't do that. I just need a blank board there. All right, so this is called example two in your notes, right? <coughs> example two? All right, and we're going to do this guy. Copy him down. He is the one I was just showing you there. Draw him, and then to the side over here, I want you to draw that bond, okay? What the Newman projection would look like if I were to look down that bond, if I were to turn this compound and look down that bond. Now, I know most of you are thinking to yourself, I can't rearrange that in my head. That's too hard. You don't have to, okay? It'd be nice if you could see that. Most people probably can't. And you can after a while. You play with these models long enough, you will, all right? Um, but right now, all you got to do is just treat one as a dot and one as a circle. So you make your dot and circle over here. Let's just do the stagger because it's easier to draw. I make my dot and I make my circle. Treat the first guy as a dot. What's coming off of this guy? Think about it. All right? I'm going to use different colors here. I'll use red for my dot. All right? And I'll use blue for my circle. So that guy is the dot, and that guy is your circle. What's coming off the red dot? Oops, I should have read that. 
coming off the red dot? Well, three things, but what are they? There are three things coming off, not two, because this is the bond you're looking down. So there's this guy up here, this guy over here, and this guy right there. What's this guy down here? He's just a hydrogen. What's that guy up there? A hydrogen. And here? Carbon. It's a carbon with three hydrogens around it, which is a methyl group, right? Yes. All right, so I've got a methyl, a hydrogen, and a hydrogen coming off the red one. So sticking in red, I could draw my H, my H, and my CH3. Can you draw what's coming off the blue one, which is the circle behind him? What's coming off that circle? Take a look. Two CH threes and a, an H. And it does kind. Of, it doesn't really matter too much, but I would want to put those bigger groups, the methyl groups, as far away as possible. All right. So I would want. I have an H here, a CH three and a CH3 maybe here, all right? I wouldn't want to have that rotated so all the CH3s were next to each other. That would be the least stable stagger. This would be the most stable stagger confirmation. There are, but there's more than one possibility, isn't there, for all of these. I could have drawn originally the red ones. You realize there's three, three possibilities for the, for the dot, three possibilities for the, for the circle, right? I could have drawn H, H, and CH3 like I did here, or I could have drawn H, H, CH3, or H, H, C, H, right? They would all be correct, yeah. all right? But I would always want to have the larger groups further away from the other large groups that are on that guy because they're going to tend to repel each other. And that would be the correct answer, all right? Now, that's hard enough. You get a lot of practice in this tomorrow with the, by the way, guess what? Beaker, that same program you were using to do the naming, will do confirmation isomers, uh, as well as structural isomers, which you just did a minute ago. Structural isomers, how about that? Wow. So yeah, I know. I'm I, impressed. I just, I can't, I can't. I'm also depressed, but that's. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right. Now I'm going to have you do one more backwards, okay? One more backwards, and see if you. When I say backwards, I mean instead of giving you the structural formula, I'm going to give you the Newman projection, and have you draw me the structural formula and name it. So try this. It is harder. Try this guy. This is example three. Yeah, this is example three. I got a C2H5, I got an H, and I got a CH3 on one guy. I've got a CH3, H, and a CH3 on the other guy. Okay. Can you draw him Absolutely. and then name him correctly? That's what I want you to try now. Pretend, do the dot and then the circle, or do the circle and then the dot, but do them separately. And keep your longer sub groups that are coming off of that dot or circle in a straight line. And that'll make it naming easier. There's a lot of ways I could draw this that would be correct. You don't necessarily have to have it drawn the same way to have the right answer. All right, once again, you have an answer, you have a name yet, or not? I want you to name it too, so make sure if you have it drawn, name it as well.
Let's see how we did here. You ready? Again, I'll use different different colors. Red for the dot. Okay. This time, oh, by the way, before I even do the red and and and, and blue, I'm just going to draw the first thing I draw on any of these would be that. Because there'll be a dot, one is a dot, and one's a circle. Now, <laughs> having done that, <clears throat> let's pretend the red one's the dot. I got a methyl group, a C2H5, and an H. Now, the biggest thing is a C2H5. And I would draw that out like this. C2H5. See it? Okay. Also, a CH3 and an H. Here's my CH3. Oh, sorry. sorry. Now, look what I almost did. That's a good mistake to make. Alright, I almost put it coming off the wrong thing. Oops. You have to be careful that I put it coming off of my original two. It's going to be coming off of here as a CH3 and then also an H. I don't fill the H's in, but you know they're there. Now, coming off the blue one, this one back here, what's coming off of that guy? A CH3, a CH3, and an H. So a CH3, oops, I don't think it's drawn all the way out. Another CH3 and an H. Okay. So, did you all have something like that drawn? And I hope you all called that. Be careful now. Is it 3, 4 dimethyl? No, short aside, 2, 3 dimethyl. What? Pentane. All right, very good. So you got the idea? All right, I'll draw one more for you to do on the back, because your class had way more questions than you guys. Maybe you're just not saying them. Uh, one more like this on the back for you to practice, because um, you don't really have room on the bottom. And uh, then we'll uh, do the bottom half of that paper as well. Okay.